Hey, I'm back to my normal squeaky voice. And uh, I'm not back to selling things at a rapid clip. So while sales are really down and I am careening towards financial disaster and I have some more free time, figured I would make a couple videos that are a little outside of the general wheelhouse of here's what I bought and here's what I sold. I've read a couple books lately that are very relevant to the hashtag reseller life. I read one book that was a book about consumer behavior in online uh, shopping, which was okay. And then I read this one, which I picked up at a Goodwill afterwards. And I actually want to talk about this. Oh, great. I actually want to talk about this one first because I think that it's a more valuable book. It's Never Eat Alone by Keith. Uh, Ferrazzi asterisk it was ghostwritten and you can kind of tell so I I read self-help slash business stuff occasionally I generally despise the genre I think most self-help books are bad in both sense of the word meaning they are badly written uh, most of them are written at like an eighth grade level not to be a snob about it but it does suck and it discourages me from, from reading the genre. They're also mostly bad in that I think that they are ideologically pretty putrid for a number of reasons, which is a different video and I'm not sure anybody cares about my, my personal axes that I have to grind about the self-help industry. This book is bad, lowercase b. It's not well written. I actually, about a third of the way through had this thought like, I bet this is ghostwritten, isn't it? And then I flipped to the cover and it is ghostwritten. So the, the quality of the writing is really poor. It does suffer from some of the, the, the cliches of this, or the, the ongoing tropes of self-help literature. They, they tend to draw on the same very limited cast of characters that they hold up as examples, just the really low-hanging fruit, the obvious example, you know, um, venerating people like Henry Ford or um, um, I like the Dalai Lamas in here and um, Winston Churchill has this long passage, Benjamin Franklin, just this kind of like grade school hero worship stuff. There's a lot of that. There's a lot of, it, it has a focus. Um, let's move to a different room where there's not construction going on. Um, so there, there's a lot that is, is kind of distracting in that, in that sense, if those kinds of things bother you as they do me, which maybe they don't because I'm more bothered by these things than seemingly anybody else in the world. But it is not a bad book with a capital B. It's not, it's not a heartless book. It's not, um, let me close the door. It doesn't have shitty values. It, it comes from a good place, which is, which is rare for this kind of a book, not to keep beating that dead horse, but it is, I think, written from a place of it's not a book for sociopaths and it's not a book for people who are let's say toxically ambitious it's it's a book for people about ambition how to pursue ambition in a way that isn't toxic and isn't sociopathic which is not what i was expecting i was expecting the opposite so the the premise of the book after that long intro is is how to network in a non-sleazy way and the importance of networking and why you should go about building a social support network, how to do it, what the benefits are, etc. cetera. And um, it's a very simple premise. You don't have to read the full book. In fact, I, I would recommend against it unless you can get it for $2 as I did because most of it is about networking in a corporate context and, and how specifically to get business meetings with influential people, how to, um, basically how to be a power player in 
uh, traditional office and obviously that doesn't apply to most of us in reselling. But the, the big message, the big thing that I took away from it that I thought was great was to frame your social network as really the only social, social, the only safety net that you have available to you that really matters. And that's true of people in the workforce in general and it is doubly true of self-employed people. And I, I feel that really deeply. I feel that being this, this autonomous market actor out in the wild alone, hunting and gathering, gets really lonely and it is a liability. And the way to mitigate that liability is to have a big group of people that you're close with, whose lives you are intimately involved in, who you can do favors for and who can help you in times of need, which is very rudimentary, basic stuff that most people understand, but I, I didn't really. I, it, took, it took this guy, reading this book and the way that it was phrased from this guy to see it at that level of, that's something I don't have, really. I'm not good at it. I've never been good at keeping a close network of people. It's a real character defect that I have, not to get too personal, but to see it in those terms of it's a safety issue, it's a personal safety issue, and it's, it's a liability financially especially, where your job prospects are constrained violently if you don't have a network of people who can do you favors. Not to, not to put too utilitarian a spin on personal relationships and not to assign objectives to friendship, but the majority of jobs that I've gotten and the majority of jobs that anybody gets are all based on personal relationships or primarily, I've gotten one job ever off of a cold email from Craigslist and it was a bad job, I didn't like it. But everything else was through personal contacts, through personal relationships, people just offering stuff to me unsolicited that I that I um, took them up on and, and kind of a string of instances of having really good luck or meeting the right person or having the right conversation. And the point of the book is, if you spread yourself really wide and you really take the time to cultivate personal relationships, on a broad level and in a deep way, then it, it pays off for you in that way, both because it's worth doing for its own sake and because it gives you this kind of a long-term career stability. And um, I think that message is basically the core of the book. You don't, as I said, have to read all of it. But um, I immediately, that struck me as, absolutely true and an invaluable insight or piece of advice and I started implementing it right away. I, my, I have this huge network of contacts. I know a lot of people or have known a lot of people and I have a lot of very, um, not superficial, but I have a lot of relationships with people that I, I didn't take the time to really cultivate and to um, it's kind of a corny word, but to, to honor the relationships and uphold my end of it and be a good friend and be present, not because I want something out of it, but because it's part of being a good person and part of being a good friend and a conscientious adult. And um, I was, I was slash am really delinquent. My account is really overdue with a ton of people in that, in that sense. So I started sending out messages and texts to people um, that I haven't, hadn't talked to in a while and have had just incredible, gratifying results. It's only been like 48 hours since I finished this book and I just texted a bunch of people. I found out a friend of mine from high school is having a baby. I found out another friend um, has um, a family member with cancer that I didn't know. I have talked to a number of people from my past, um, had, a had a long, good phone conversation with another friend, 
and texted another guy, brought the second guy up with the first guy, and then got them talking after a bunch of years. So they're, they're talking now. Um, found out um, a friend is moving to Los Angeles and offered to teach him how to do eBay stuff. Offered another friend how to do eBay stuff. So it's just, it's very easy and it feels pretty amazing and it feels like time really well spent and I, both days I did that yesterday and I did it the day before and it just it took like not that much time and I ended both days feeling not nearly as lonely or unfulfilled as I usually do so whether you read the book or not I think it's something worth considering both from again a standpoint of this is how human beings should behave and also it makes you less fragile and it insulates you against um, a very uncaring and violent world um, that is more than happy to make you homeless if you suffer bad fortune or more than happy to let you die hungry on the street. So, um, not to get too big for my britches here, but um, it was a really good read and a really valuable thing to, to start thinking about. So, um, that's, that's my little book report, and uh, if this video was not overly long-winded or sanctimonious, then I'll, I'll do more of them. So, thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate it.